Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to install the sh2lib wrapper uh, on the Arduino core so we can use it on the ASP32. To give you a little bit of context, my objective here is that we prepare the environment to get started doing some experiments using the HTTP2 protocol. So, uh, before we get started, we need a little bit of more context. So, we are going to start by IDF. IDF is the lower level framework um, that can be used to program the SP32. It's the official one from Esperceive, uh, the guys that uh, do the SP32 ship. And basically, it is a lower level framework that we can use to program our SP32. And the Arduino core, as we have already seen in previous tutorials, is built on top of IDF. And one interesting thing is that we can actually use APIs from IDF on the Arduino core. So, uh, in the Arduino core, we have the, the higher level classes that we are used to use. So, they are higher level abstraction to make uh, to make our life easier uh, when coding. But if you, we want, we can uh, access to the lower level APIs of IDF. Uh, which gives us uh, a lot more flexibility to access functionalities that are not yet abstracted uh, in the Arduino core. Uh, but on the other hand, we need to look a little bit to lower level code. So it's not as trivial or as easy as using uh, the Arduino constructs. So, uh, and in IDF, uh, if we want to, to play around with HTTP2, the easiest way is to uh, use the ng-http2 library, which is available uh, as a component on the Arduino core, and it corresponds to an implementation of the HTTP2 algorithm. Not however that, uh, uh, as far as I'm aware, this is a library that is independently maintained from the uh, from IDF, and it is included at, uh, uh, as a sub-module uh, in IDF. So, as far as I'm aware, this is being develop, uh, developed by another team. Uh, either ways, um, the important thing to, to take in consideration here is that it is available and we can use it both in IDF and in the Arduino core. Uh, nonetheless, NGHTTP2 is really, really low level. Um, so, one thing that is interesting is that even in IDF, um, they created the wrapper on top of NGHTTP2, uh, which aims for people to get started faster uh, using the HTTP2 features. Uh, so basically, we have a NGHTTP2, the, the lower level library, if you want to use it, but then we have a nice wrapper in IDF that although it's not so higher level uh, as the Arduino, um, it, it kind of hides uh, some of the complexity of NGHTTP2. So, and in the next tutorials, uh, in order to make our life easier, we are going to take advantage of this sh2lib uh, wrapper uh, that we are going to install on this tutorial. So, I'm going to show you here, basically. Um, so, so sorry, going back, this is basically the main page of the project of the ng-http2, uh, and I really encourage you to take a look to, to understand a little bit more what this project is and what can be done with it. So, moving on to IDF, this is the GitHub page of IDF. Um, sorry, it's not here, it's here. So, and in particular, um, this is the, the sh2lib uh, library, uh, as you can see here. Basically, it, it is part uh, of an example, of, uh, of the examples from IDF, and it is part of, uh, of an example on how to do an HTTP2 request. And basically, this is an auxiliary wrapper that was built um, to help the people uh, doing these requests, and it is used on, on the HTTP2 example from IDF. Nonetheless, this is good enough for us to, to do many of the basic stuff about doing uh, HTTP2 GET requests. Nonetheless, take in consideration that this sh2lib wrapper, uh, at the time I'm recording this, it doesn't have uh, any feature regarding establishing an HTTP2 server. So, all the features that are available here are for, uh, for implementing an HTTP2 client. So basically, we have uh, uh, these two files, uh, sh2lib.c and sh2lib.h, and basically these are the files that will make our library uh, on the Arduino core, on the Arduino side. Uh, just to show you um, basically uh, a little bit of how we can uh, include and why we can include um, lower level stuff from IDF, uh, basically, here we are in the GitHub page of the Arduino core, and as you can see here, 
uh, under this, uh, this directory, under this path, tools SDK include, uh, we have a lot uh, of lower level libraries that uh, are from IDF, and you can see here the full list of stuff that we can use on our, of APIs that we can use on our Arduino code. And if we go back to where I was previously, uh, basically uh, the one that we are going to leverage is this ngHttp. So basically, as you can see here, the ngHttp2 uh, header file is available for us to use in the Arduino core so we can have access to all of these functionalities. But again, since this is a very, very low level library, we are going to instead leverage uh, the sh2lib wrapper uh, that will also be imported from IDF, but is, uh, is much user friendly, much more user friendly. So basically, the first thing we are going to do is locating our libraries folder uh, from the Arduino uh, from the Arduino environment. Uh, usually, it is under this path: C users uh, your username documents Arduino and then libraries. This is typically the default path, but you need to check for your installation uh, where you can find the libraries of your uh, of the Arduino of your Arduino environment. So, and after we, you look at this folder, the first thing we, you need to do is creating here uh, a new folder called sh2lib. And basically this folder will be what will hold our, our library. So as you can see here, I previously uh, had, uh, in order to test this, I've previously imported the files to here, but I'm going to delete so I can show you the whole procedure. So now we are going to basically download these two, two files, the sh2lib.c and the sh2lib.h from the IDF environment. Uh, I'm going to leave the link in the description, but the procedure should be very easy. You can either download the whole uh, IDF project and look at this folder and extract these two files, or you can, since uh, these are only two files, you can download them one by one. You can click in the file and you go here to this row uh, to this raw button and it will show you the content of the file uh, in raw format. So this is basically the code uh, you have inside this file. So you should click in save as, sorry but my, my menu is in Portuguese, but you should uh, right click and then select save as and then look at your your previously created sh2lib folder under the Arduino folders directory and simply save here the file. Note that the extension of the file should already be the correct one, so in this case it is a C source file, uh, but double check in case your, uh, your browser does uh, change something, but it shouldn't because this is the extension of the file uh, in GitHub. So I'm going to save the first one, and it's already here in my folder, and then if I go back Okay, one more. Now I'm going to do the same for the .h file. So I'm going again to go here to raw. I'm going to click the save as. Okay, and save it under the same folder. And as you can see here, under my sh2lib folder, I now should have this sh2lib.c file and this sh2lib.header file. And this is it. This is just the procedure that we need to do to install this wrapper. So now to finalize this, this brief tutorial, um, I'm going to show you here how to include this, this sh2lib wrapper um, and we will confirm that it is compiling. So basically, uh, we need to take in consideration that we are uh, working with C code. Um, and there are parts of this code that are not directly compatible to be compiled uh, under the Arduino core. Uh, so we need to include this external C um, construct around the, the include. So the compiler uh, compiles just fine. In many cases, when you are including libraries from, the, from IDF, lower level libraries, like the ones I've showed you, in the SDK folder, uh, in the includes, in that list, many times you need to include to enclose the includes in this extern C block, otherwise we'll run in uh, compile errors, okay? So, but it should work fine. So, I'm going to click here in the verify, and this will try to compile the code. Hopefully this doesn't take much long. Uh, okay, it should not take much long, so, as you can see here, the sketch just compiled fine, and now we can finally use our sh2lib wrapper. Obviously, uh, 
and uh, let me finish by saying this, this SHTLib is an entry point uh, for the NGHTTP2 uh, libraries, which are obviously much more powerful because they pretty much let you access to um, a lot of HTTP2 functionalities, whereas this SH2lib is much simpler and only exposes a very limited subset of functionalities. So, but to get started in these next tutorials, uh, it's, it's more than enough uh, using this sh2lib.h library. Uh, another thing that I would like to, to tell you is that at the time I'm recording this, there is no higher level abstraction uh, available on the Arduino core, for example, like we have to do a regular HTTP uh, request. Uh, we have the HTTP client library and it's really, really trivial uh, to do a request, but uh, at this time, for HTTP2, we need to go to these lower level constructs. I would also like to tell you that this is mainly experimental. I've been very recently started playing around with HTTP2. Uh, so, uh, since this is, exper is experimental, uh, first it is expected that this may change in the future, these APIs, eventually when they land in the Arduino core uh, as features from the Arduino core. Um, and other than that, I would also like to say if you find any imprecision um, in this, in the in the information I'm I'm sharing here regarding HTTP2 or how how NGHTTP2 works, please let me know in the comments below, as it will be very useful to uh, improve the knowledge about this library. Uh, so in next tutorials, I'm going to start covering how we can do, how we can connect to an HTTP2 server and how we can do some requests. Thank you very much for watching.